I'm Ingrid Vila. I'm an environmental engineer. So that's how I got into environmental issues. I actually studied environmental engineering. I have a bachelor's degree uh, in environmental engineering from Cornell University and a master's in environmental engineering uh, with specialty on water studies from Stanford University. I've served in government a couple of times. The most recent one, I served as chief of staff for the Commonwealth in 2013 and 2014. I had the pleasure of meeting Ingrid a number of years ago when she served as chief of staff in the governor's office in Puerto Rico, while I was serving as the regional administrator for the Environmental Protection Agency. Ingrid is one of the single most effective professionals I've ever had the privilege of working with. I worked very closely with her on trying to get support and resources to an economically struggling but absolutely beautiful community called Caño Martin Pena, where there was an effort to get people better housing and to dredge an old canal so that it could be ecologically restored and be a resource for the community. We, we didn't really call it climate change resiliency at the time, but that's exactly what it was. I also worked with Ingrid on trying to convince the U.S. military to clean up the Vieques firing range. For over 60 years, the beautiful tropical island of Vieques was used for military operations and practice ranges. The Department of Defense left behind a legacy of unexploded ordnance. It was a federal Superfund site that EPA was responsible to clean up having a partner in the governor's office to try to pick up the pace on that cleanup was really helpful. Right after I left government, I founded a non-for-profit organization in Puerto Rico called Cambio uh, to support communities and promote sustainable and responsible actions for Puerto Rico. We started Cambio in 2015. Our first project was supporting communities who were fighting against a waste incinerator that was being proposed for Arecibo, Puerto Rico. Communities were opposing this project, yet government was not paying attention uh, to their claims. So we came in and started supporting communities, working together with them. They wanted to build the incinerator of trash in Arecibo. And it was a struggle that we, it took us at least about almost 10 years. Ingrid has been a big help to us with all these other people, experts, scientists, doctors, and academic people, religious people. <laughs> We did a real good job educating the population to understand why we were against this incinerator because, you know, it, it contaminated and the health issues, the environmental issues. So we're ha very happy that we have prevailed. After Hurricane Maria, the island was left entirely without power. A lot of sectors didn't get power back for up to a year. So we started focusing on energy um, and sustainable energy alternatives. Unfortunately, in 2018, right after the hurricane, the governor announced that he was going to transform the electric grid, but he was going to do so through privatization and through methods that would continue to pursue fossil fuel investments on the island. And that's how we came up with um, Queremos Sol, which is the shirt I'm wearing today. Queremos Sol, which is We Want Sun in English. It's a very diverse group with very many peoples from different organizations. We have the Electric Union from Puerto Rico as part of Queremos Sol. We have professors from the universities. We want to transform our electric system to use renewables, okay? We live in Puerto Rico. We live in the tropics. We've got sun all, all year. We're proposing a sustainable transition to 100% renewable energy using rooftop solar and battery storage, and also promoting a collective purchase alternative that will make it more feasible for communities to be able to acquire solar PV systems. The proposal would put more power to the people um, people would have ownership of the system. They would have control of consumption. So the consumer transitions to being someone who is active 
in the system, in the grid, in participating in decisions that are being made instead of just being a passive uh, customer. The damage and the shock that Hurricane Maria represented to the people of Puerto Rico suddenly opened the door for people to be receptive to alternatives, for people to start to think about what is the condition of our energy infrastructure and what is the most sensible solution to reduce vulnerability. We need to invest the infrastructure money on rooftops, solar, renewables. We keep insisting on that and we keep insisting the why it's important that no more fossil fuels in Puerto Rico, no more. And so people now are getting more interested in finding out. I want to know about more about this Queremos Sol group. In terms of the coming year, I'm quite excited about developing this model for collective solar purchase on the island to see if we can actually develop something that will make it affordable for people to be able to acquire these systems. At the same time, I'm quite excited about a modeling work that we're doing actually along with AIFA that will detail what type of investments in infrastructures need to happen in order to get to 100% renewable using rooftop solar. And that is going to be a really powerful tool because when we are able to uh, demonstrate with modeling that this is something attainable, that this is something that can be done, I think it'll be really difficult for the power authority executives and those in charge in government to tell us that uh, this is something that cannot be done or is something that is too costly or something that um, could be considered maybe in the future, but not now. So when we finish this modeling work, I think we're going to be in an even better position to pursue our objectives in Queremos Sol. It's a no brainer. And Puerto Rico will only transition to a clean energy future if the leadership comes from the residents of Puerto Rico. But the residents also need some technical expertise and some strategic support. And that's where Ingrid comes in. No one's better at this in Puerto Rico than Ingrid. I would argue no one's better than this in the country. Ingrid Vila is, you know, one of the most extraordinary people I have ever met. Um, I'm very proud of her. With her knowledge and her determination, you know, to do what's right and to help so many people, I think that we can do this now.